हेलो आई एम मनोहर शेट्टी फ्रॉम डोनो पावला गोवा थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी ऑन बोर्ड आई एल बिगिन विद अ पोएम ऑन द पैंडमिक व्हिच इज कंपेलिंग अस टू रीड पोइट्री इन दिस मैनर इंस्टेड ऑफ फेस टू फेस Uh, the poem is called uh, "Lockdown Song" and was published in the Wire just yesterday. Lockdown Song. Forced indoors, the mirror is your god. It's time for personal grooming, manicures. pedicures and finicky facials though no one else is looking it's time to go on a diet and fitness regime though they're stuffed tinned and frozen stowed away in your basement but in time you'll get heavier in body and mind for the recluse and jailbird is nothing new the contagion most democratic knows no cure and can spread with just one breath from patient to physician out in slums and open roads their lungs are dustbins the masks porous the cops rain down with their truncheons enforcing penance with frog jumps Now the peacock, leopard, and gazelle strut, prowl, and leap across pavements. They've reclaimed their space as you stare down from your cage. Now the long knives, edgy sickles, and those native pistols hidden behind prayer books and idols of unforgiving gods are cocked and loaded. soon from a mob they line up in disciplined rank and file they'll defy the eternal curfew they have you you and you in their sights uh, the next poem is called letting go so dedicated to my father who died 3 uh, months short of his 100th birthday letting go my grief was short lived when you died 3 months short of your 100th birthday there was no breast beating as you gave in to fate leaving behind a sense of relief almost and an album of hinged memories the milestone of a century would have been a celebration but for you only a moment of bemusement wondering if the fuss was about a grandson's impending engagement or yet another birth in our growing family we were all present respectful of a long life devoid of bad blood and unforgiven transgressions just the crackle and warmth of the clouds of ash incense camphor and a verse of scripture rising to a union with the heavens the third poem is called otherworldly Uh, all these poems are from my forthcoming book of poems called borderlines otherworldly his training came early first as a clerk the doctored ledgers and folios earning him marks in red then as a door to door salesman peddling alleged pashmina shawls in high summer then as a night watchman where he learned the art of patience 
before a travelling magician took him under his cloak, turban and wings. This is where he filled his bag of tricks. Conjuring ash from thin air as he mesmerized those worn faces with blue eyes into parting from their earthly possessions. Turning his ashram into a nudist colony, with tantric potency he delivered infants into barren women, their husbands granting him their might, running into millions. At last, at death's door, from a heavenly intoxicant, or was it a new strain of STD? His devotees sang and danced till he voluntarily offered samadhi and was deemed eternally to be at one with the stars. The next poem is called Touch. Touch. Trolled into despair, he turned to his notebook made of paper. He shut down his system, tapped nostalgically on his Remington, doodled in the margins of newspapers, lost himself in the op art of crossword puzzles, and in such passions as ceramics, bonsai, and calligraphy. He turned his back formally on those bleeps and blimps and found solace in cutting up a fresh lemon into sunrise, the leaves of lettuce into frilly handkerchiefs. He playfully lopped off the phallic heads of mushrooms, the court gestures cap of the aubergine, caressed the concealed weapons and roses the silky down of kiwi fruit. He basked in the iridescent spotlight of the dragonfly on his fingertip and in the hummingbird's standing ovation. The next poem is called Cocktails. I thought his name was Mehta till told meaningfully it was Mushtaq. I felt a closer bond with him then, more so when he introduced me to his wife Sita, whose brother Bharat was married to Clara de Silva from Goa, her older sister to Amarjeet Singh from Patiala, his first cousin Agnello recently toasted his 10th wedding anniversary with his beloved Meher Pestonji and their sons Keki and Galileo. To mark the occasion, I cooked up a melting pot of khichdi and served some heady cocktails of wine, country whiskey and brandy. The next poem is called Walls. Yes, they do have ears, but can't spread the word or embellish what they've heard, save through those scrawled slogans and glued posters. posters. They stand mute between rooms or are topped by jagged glass, armed by watchtowers and searchlights. They are used to divide and rule. They are not natural mountains or cliff face barriers and have no answer to hawks and missiles, but they grow taller every year. This one is called Raw Deal, and it has uh, Donald Trump in mind. Raw Deal. Forgive the obvious pun, but if he's that trump card, blonde cap of hair and all, a Dennis the Menace double, minus the freckles, 
the joker in the suit who partners the shake of diamonds what will become of the black queen if he is the king of knaves the jack of oily deals that ace in all the right moves and clubs always set to cash in his chips the prez who builds the taller stars what will become of the two of hearts the next one is you don't want to know you don't want to know what has crept over your bread and fruit as you slept or what has crawled over your bed while you clocked those hours those hard hours at work you don't want to know that the lettuce or carrot you just bit into was riddled with cockroaches in that sack in the wholesale market you don't want to know if that razor blade in the barber shop had nicked a man with venereal disease or worse no you don't want to know of battery hens or slaughter houses where calves and lambs to keep them fresh are drained of blood drop by drop no you don't want to know ignorance is bliss the sage has said and even if half knowledge is a dangerous thing you just can't have eyes behind your behind your head uh, those are all the poems that i have uh, thank you very much for joining me